Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David and in today's series, I would like to talk about this particular flowering plant known as Night Blooming Jasmine. I must say on the face value, the flowers are quite insignificant. However, it may look a little bit more like a needle point kind of a bells type of florals but however the most interesting part about these flowers is actually not the visual display rather than the, rather than the fragrance. This particular plant come with many names and one of the very famous one is the lady of the night and most commonly as night blooming jasmine. Now I must say that one of the strangest thing about this particular flower is that when it comes to daytime, you can sniff as much as you want. You will not get a, a, an ounce of any fragrance out of it. You won't even believe it that this is actually a jasmine because it is almost fragrantless when, when it comes to daytime. But when it comes to evening and to the night, you may say that the whole block is actually enveloped. It's sort of like the whole fragrance is cascading throughout the whole neighborhood. It's somehow I have come to a kind of a feeling where it was very mysterious to me because the fragrance somehow disappeared when it comes to daytime. Another unique thing here is that this fragrance actually travel away from the plant. It will be something like uh, you can say about 3 or 4 houses away and suddenly you can find that the fragrance is enveloping that area alone and you'll be wondering where is the flower, where is the plant. And then when it come close to this tree, this shrub, it's a mesmerizing. I think you can even all the flowers just fall flat, fail to come to the power pack of this fragrance even plumera falls flat even liang liang falls flat or even the grand duke of tuscany this particular one is really the queen of the night i must say that i'm not over emphasizing it i have come across that there is a distinction here that you will find that somebody who loves it really head over heels just loves this plant and the exact tension of it is that there are others who hate this plant because the, the fragrance is just so overwhelming. So you have it sort of like the measuring scale of both love and hate relationship with this particular jasmine. Also, I must say a little bit of a taboo with this. It because of the fragrance is so overwhelming the factor here that is that when it comes to taboo some people connect this with ghost stories and ghost attracting fragrances and this fall into that category so in a way to say that you know this particular plant is not for the weak hearted if you are like me who have the thoughts that nothing evil will come for those who are pure hearted and these are the types that fragrance that falls into that category now coming to plant care this particular one normally i will actually use the cuttings as for propagation and i find that this one does very well on a pruning factor where i constantly prune this particular plant to keep it more compact base however this plant do span out more into like a star shaped kind of a formation where it really sprout out all the branches so regular pruning is really required or else the plant will spend out a lot of its energy on growth and it may discount on the flowering. I must say that I really have not given much care for this even when it comes to watering or even feeding I do not actually use any fertilizer on it and because of this particular plant really grows so big and I don't really want to use a fertilizer for it to overwhelm itself and it often goes to my neighbor's house which can cause a little bit of irritation because it actually blocks their entrance gateway. So you can see over here the branch is quite thick all I have to do is just trim off all the small uh, growing branches just to keep it compact so in a way I can mention to you that this particular one is actually grown on a potted plant but however 
I believe that the root ball has actually extended into the drainage hole of the potted plant and it's established itself. Looking at the size of it, I can say that this particular plant is just have acclimatized itself in the growing condition here. So in a way, I can mention to you that uh, if you are growing them in a tropical climate and if you're growing it on a ground level and if the plant has established itself and it's receiving itself in a in a way in a weekly manner of daily rain i believe you just don't have to give any care for it and it's very much self-sustaining one thing though i believe that regular pruning does help this particular plant to focus itself with its blooming so in a way that will actually mix the plant to give more blooms rather than plant growth so to say that let's say if you're growing it sort of like in a potted plant more on a side of an indoor gardening kind of stuff uh, do take note that this particular plant do require bright direct sunlight in a way if lack of it, you may not have the blooms. Another factor comes to pest problems. I find that these do have mealybug problems. There was once a heavy infestation that took place and I was not able to utilize a lot of pesticide on them. Hence, I pruned it hard and removed all these infected areas and the plant just did so well. And one of the problems with mealybugs was actually the ants which actually brought this insect for farming. I believe that this particular plant can do much more hard pruning. However, I do not want to cut it too small because I just like the appearance where it looks to be more greenish and lush full. When it comes to potting media, I find that this particular plant is not fussy. You can actually use any of the regular potting mix that has been sold in common nurseries. Or you can also use fast draining media as this will actually help the root growth to be develop itself faster. I have once experienced that I have placed the cuttings in water but I failed to change it and the whole collection have rotten away. So do take note that if you are keeping it in water, do change the water constantly and also watch out for any rotting that place, take place on the stem. Often I find that this particular problem occurs when there are one or two leaves that is submerged together in the stem cutting. So do take note to remove all the leaves when placing it in water for root propagation. Do take note that there is also another variety which of the yellow colored flowers. However, I believe that both have almost similar fragrance like kind of features. Do also take note that each flower, each inflorescence only lasts for a day. So once the flower has already bloomed, it will fall off by the morning time. However, because these are actually forming in bunches, the new formed buds will actually bloom back in the evening night time. There is another important thing that I want to mention concerning pollinators. Frankly speaking, I have not found any insect actually coming to these flowers during the daytime. However, I believe the fragrance is very much to attract the night pollinators, most perhaps the nocturnal species. However, I have not seen any so far. In a way, I suspect that it could be a hawk moth kind of a species where it does have a long proboscis for it to feed upon the nectar but I really have not done any research concerning this particular factor when it comes to feeding. Also do take note that night blooming jasmine can be a very big plant. So do take note to keep a big potted plant for this particular plant to grow and they can actually last very long especially like a perennial plant. They do not die back or go dormant like any other jasmine plants. In a way to say it's not a sensitive plant, so you can actually grow this if you're having problems with any other jasmine types. There is another unique thing concerning this jasmine is that these do form berries. Most of it will be in a white colored berries and it's said to be poisonous. So do take note that if you have pets which does eat 
any of your plants and garden things do con be concerned that these berries are toxic I have now come to the end of my video. These are based on my personal experiences and my opinion concerning night blooming jasmine. If you have any questions, do put them in a comment below and I will try my best as my ability to answer them. I would really appreciate if you can click like, subscribe and support my channel. Do check out on my other videos in the playlist concerning fragrant plants and flowering plants in the tropical region. Till then, have a nice day and catch you in the next video. Take care and have a nice day. Bye.